I'm going to read for you right now a story called Pumpkinhead. Um, this is a story I wrote many years ago. It was first published in a magazine called Brew back in 1998 or 99. Um, it's actually been reprinted in a half a dozen places since then, um, including an anthology called Candy in the Dumpster, and I have one copy of that if anyone's interested. Um, so I hope you'll enjoy it. This is my Halloween story for you. Jack's hands trembled as he traced a small circle on the slick skin of the pumpkin, using a magic marker and the bottle cap he'd lifted from his mom's medicine cabinet. It looked to be a right, the right size. A gibbous moon shone in garish relief off the night-polished hides of hundreds of orange globes, but Jack's potion, chosen pumpkin was special. He'd picked it for its size as well as its seclusion. Somehow, this particular vine had crept over the irrigation ditch and turned its offspring well away from the others under the shade of a gnarled elm. The tiny circle drawn, Jack opened his pocket knife and with quick, short thrusts, turned his drawing into a hole. His heart began pumping with growing volume as he completed the first stage of his violation. You've got to try this. Tom had told him in a whisper the previous week after school. Exhaling a cloud of Marlboro smoke with practiced disdain for anyone who might be staring his way, Tom had laughed. It is so twisted. It's great. You just have to make sure the hole's not too big or it won't work. At first, he'd figured Tom had, had to be making it up. Nobody would try that. Totally gross. But every time he thought about it, he got a funny feeling inside. The idea attracted him. And so, tonight, under the chill wind of an October moon, Jack stood holding a pumpkin pouring. This was stupid, he thought for the hundredth time. This is warped. But after taking a furtive glance around the pumpkin patch behind him, silently amazed at the endless rows of orange basketball shapes stretching to the black horizon, Jack unbuckled his belt and dropped his jeans to the ground. A cold knot twisted his stomach at the realization that he was going through with this perversion, and a countering hot stab of anticipation drove through his heart and groin. With a shiver and a shrug, he shoved his underpants past his knees, and goosebumps popping out across his bare lower body, Jack knelt next to the pumpkin. Gripping the rough, wrinkled skin of the dead vine atop the gourd, Jack guided his straining penis into the newly sawn receptacle. He gasped aloud at its touch. He was afraid at first. Would the hole be large enough to receive him? Would he be trapped inside? Would he catch some weird pumpkin disease, like <laughs> orange genital warts? <laughs> but none of these concerns stopped him from pressing through the gently resisting cavity. It was cold, sticky. He imagined his favorite pinup girl lying there in the leaves and brushed before him. She'd be warmer he thought, but sticky, too. Would she feel like this? He stifled a moan as he pressed into the new, new area of slimy seeds and pumpkin hair. Jack moved close to embrace all of the warty hide of the pumpkin as its jellied hairs tickled and caressed his member inside. It felt as if it was moving with him, pulling at him to stay as he arched away. He'd cut the hole just right. It was tight enough to grip him like a woman, or, as good as he thought a woman might, a woman filled with cold slime and seeds, <laughs> he laughed. The thought driving him to cleave hard to the lined sides of the gourd, he uttered one more involuntary gasp of pleasure as the tremors of release rocked him and left. And then the clammy fear at the extent of his depravity gripped him. What had he done here? <laughs> Rolling away from his vegetable mate, he yanked his <laughs> pants up, not even bothering to wipe off the commingled strands of orange and white mucus. It gelled in the hair of his groin and belly, a sticky accusation of his strange and darkly pleasurable fornication. He tucked two pumpkins under his arms as he stole away from the quiet field. Where'd you get those? His mother yelled as he went dashing through the kitchen with his stolen treasures. Don't take them upstairs, they'll rot, Jack. <laughs> Depositing the pumpkin safely in his room, he returned to the kitchen to assuage his mother. The trick with her was to get things settled before she got talking about it. Then she wouldn't bother forcing him to change. 
I'm going to carve them up there, he announced, staving off her objections. Halloween's in a couple days, and they won't rot before then. If I leave them outside, kids will kick them through the street. She looked uncertain, and he pressed his advantage. I'll clean up everything. Don't worry. That night, <laughs> after turning out the light, Jack ran his hands lightly over the smooth, bumpy skins of his pumpkins. Their texture drove a shiver through his body. His groin jumped. Whitely naked and bent beneath the moonlight glinting through the bedroom window, Jack kissed his pumpkins goodnight and then dove guiltily into bed. His saliva glittered in beads on the dark orange skins. Jack had thought he'd share his experience with Tom if he went through with it. After all, it had been Tom who clued him in, right? But when he got to school the next day and saw his friend's cynical sneer as he joked about getting a piece of Mary Scott, Jack realized that he and his pumpkin queen were a private item. <laughs> that night, with the bedroom door locked, he once again traced the bottle cap on a pumpkin and punched through its pale, pulpy hymen. His hips moved faster, sliding the pumpkin and himself across the floor as he fought to stay on with his new lover. But as he stifled a grunt of orgasmic reaction, it was his first pumpkin that he found himself thinking of. <laughs> the next night, he found himself fidgeting at the dinner table. Meatloaf and carrots with cauliflower colored his plate. The orange and white of his vegetables lay in front of him, reminding him of his newfound carnal pleasures. And it excited him. He was dying to get away from the table to lock himself for precious moments with his pumpkin. But when he finally got there, when he carved a new hole and sluttishly spent himself, once again, he found himself craving the attentions of the first, the monstrous pumpkin queen whose insides had seemed to suck him to ecstasy that first time. Tucking his gluey dick back in his pants, Jack quickly scooped and finished carving his first pumpkin. <laughs> He had to have some evidence for his rush to get to the room. Oh, that's very um, nice, Jack, his mom said as he showed off his newly carved pumpkin. She looked puzzled. I thought it was supposed to look scary, hon. So this one's a happy pumpkin, Jack shrugged and went back upstairs to clean up. He got two more rides, one after school and one after dinner out of the next pumpkin before carving it into the face which his mother, in utter puzzlement, pronounced beautiful. In years past, Jack's pumpkins had always held a certain demonic terrorism in their fangs and slanted eyes, but these, she stared at the two demure smiles on the orange globes of the kitchen table, these were coquettes. <laughs> I'm going to be trick-or-treating for a while, Jack announced, letting the door slam behind him before there could be protest. She thought he was too old to go, but why should the little runts get all the free candy? He'd borrowed Tom's football jersey and helmet and set off. It was a windy Halloween, and an earlier rain had set a bone-slathering chill in the air. Leaves rustled and dropped wetly all around him as he worked his way block by block to the edge of town. The moon was small and piercingly white by the time he admitted where he'd been edging his way to. <laughs> At last he called off the charade. Breaking into a run, Jack sprinted with a shopping bag full of candy the remaining four blocks to the pumpkin field. He thought about her, his first, his pumpkin queen, all through school. The gourds he brought home simply hadn't fulfilled him like her. He prayed she was still there. He prayed she hadn't rotted from the hole he'd gored in her side. <laughs> the pumpkin field was a dismal sight on Halloween night. Only the rejects were left here now. The misshapen, rotted, two small pumpkins littered the field, seemingly in large numbers. But the deep, dark depressions where their brethren had but recently rested betrayed the extent of their abandonment. Jack loped through the field, heading toward the back ditch, anxious to reach the shelter of that crooked elm. But she wasn't there. At first he thought he had the wrong tree, but then he saw the telltale deep depression she'd left and his own rutted knee prints beside it. Who would have taken a pumpkin with a hole right in the middle of her best side, he wondered. He sank to the ground. How, how had he become such a perv that he was lusting after a pumpkin? But she'd been right here, so cool, so good. Looking for someone? 
voice at his back startled him to his feet. No, no, he stammered as he stared at the girl before him. She was naked, entwined in a vine that stretched from her belly to the ground beside him. She stepped closer and his breath caught. She was orange, the deep mottled orange of ripe pumpkin. She exuded a musky vegetable odor as she stepped closer and ran a warded finger up his face to poke into his open mouth. There, there was a pumpkin here, he said, pulling away and pointing to the hollow on the ground, the hollow near where her vine was embedded in the earth. Yes, she answered, her voice a husky rustle of summer and seed. She touched him again, and he saw then that her skin, though smooth, was marred occasionally by dark warts and dimples. Wet-looking, translucent strands of hair hung from her head and her crotch. He guessed that her hair would be cool and sticky. As she wrapped her arms around him in askance, he found that he guessed correctly. You were looking for my mother, she said, the wind in his ear. Her tongue, cool and wet, traced designs on his neck before she said, that means you are the man who raped her. You are my father. At that, she dropped to his waist and began tugging at his belt. I will be the woman my mother could never have been for you, she promised. And slowly he began to aid her in releasing his clothes. Common sense told him that this was not what it seemed. Pumpkins did not have human, albeit orange, and warty children. Girls did not give blowjobs to strange boys in fields, but here she was, and her cool touch was driving him to fever. He let her crawl across his skin. Her slimy kisses stuck to his skin like fruit pulp. His cock was so erect, it was painful. He'd never been so aroused. Her breasts were hard, tipped by dark brown warts, and her hair was entangling itself on his body, ripping loose from her in sticky heaps. He felt it on his crotch from the pressure of his own. It was hidden in the crease of his neck like chilled sauerkraut. And then she pulled back. Stretching out across the dirt where just days before he'd had her mother, she showed him the oval valley between her smooth, lightly creased legs. You can have this, she promised. I'll be better than my mother. But first, you'll have to cut my cord. She held the browning vine up from her belly, and with squeamish understanding, he dug through his discarded clothes for his pocket knife. Flipping open the blade, he held it as close as he could to her belly and began sawing. She stiffened as he did, but said nothing. A clear, sticky fluid flowed across his knife and onto his hands, and it was over. Now, she said, her voice a rasp of longing. Seed me, fertilize me. Water me. In her tone, those words sounded like the dirtiest night talk Jack had ever heard. Without pausing to close his knife, he tossed it away and pressed his legs to hers. This was like the first time, he thought, as he bucked on top of the cool pumpkin girl. Her eyes glittered blackly in the moonlight beneath him, and he kissed her hard lips, ran his tongue along the pulp ridge of her teeth. She sucked his heat into her her natural frigidity only driving him to a hot wash of orgasm. Yes, she wheezed as he came at last, panting and flopping atop her like an epileptic. And then, as Jack looked to see if his lover's eyes were as satisfied as his own, he saw that her hunger had only just begun. We will fertilize hundreds of seeds together, my love, she promised, encircling him in a grip of orange rind solid as wood. He struggled, kicked, screamed, but there was no escaping the grasp of the pumpkin queen as in a flash her arms and legs sealed around him and they began to roll as one downhill. And who paid attention to the muffled screams in the depth of night on Halloween? They found his clothes eventually, underneath an old gnarled elm beneath an empty pumpkin field. They were lying on bare earth Nearby, a knife was stabbed crookedly in the dirt. As the farmer led police to the spot to search for further clues of the missing boy, he spied, spied a huge orange pumpkin peeking through the weeds at the bottom of the hill. He shook his head at having missed such a prize the week before. It would have bought a good price. 
Inside that prize gourd, a white slime shape contorted at the sound of voices, kneading hands of pumpkin hair kept him in near constant orgasm and held by handful by handful deposited orange slick newly formed white seeds into pockets on his flesh. We will fertilize hundreds of seeds together, she whispered, in words that only he could hear. <laughs> So every year somebody emails me, like this has been going on for over 10 years now, somebody emails me a story about somebody, some news story where somebody has like screwed a gourd or a pumpkin or something, and they blame me. It's not my fault. No pumpkin pie this Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs>